Hi, and welcome along to the Invincible Podcast with my man, Lee, the judge. Judges, we are here for another show. Of course, it is the international break. <laughs> and that not bit interested of, break. That bit of silence it? sums it up uh, perfectly, isn't it? I mean... The non-interested break. You know? Oh, I, I, uh, really? Are you looking forward to these internationals? No, I'm not. And I'm, and I'm just like, it just, it's a bit like just, uh, I don't know what, it's just an interruption of Ugh. what's been a brilliant Premier League. Yeah. You know, obviously for us as Arsenal fans, we've been having a great time of it. And then all of a sudden now, this just comes right in the middle of it to just ruin the flow. Stopped it twice. Yeah, I was like, well, we, was we, had, a, yeah, we had a World Cup. We had a World you know Cup, I mean? yeah, and we was going well up until the World Cup, yeah. weren't we? And then it was that break. Well, right, we'd come back and done okay. But yeah, like, you know, I, I don't know about you, but even though we, when we lost on the Thursday to um, to sport, I couldn't wait for the Sunday. for, for the, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, like, you know, I, I'm looking forward to every Arsenal game at the moment. Like, I'm really, like, excited about going to the Arsenal. Now, Roll back a couple of year ago when the international break was coming up, I was quite relieved. It was like, yes. it was like, it was like sometimes a, I yeah, thank God for the yeah, international yeah, it was, break. Yeah, it was, oh, thank God that ain't going to be, up, I ain't going to have the hump this weekend, like. Yeah. You know? But now our, our things have changed so dramatically, Robbie, and, and, and this international break now is just something I'm not interested yeah, in whatsoever. Yeah, to, for me, it's just like we just had a World Cup yeah. that interrupted the season massively I mean when I saw the international break I was like oh, do, do we I don't want it nah. you know what I mean like even if we weren't playing as good as we are you know, I'm just get on with the football man do those international games at the end of the season yeah. or something yeah you know, you know it's just, honestly when I saw that I was like oh bloody hell you know and they are actually important games because they're Euro qualifiers so you know they are important games they are you know but I'm just like oh are they Come the end of it. No, 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 seriously. Come, come the end of this. End of it. Of our group. Mm. It's going to be Italy and, and England that are going to go through. Yeah. So you know they're they're, they're non farcical, aren't they? They're just like yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I guarantee you. You know, it'd be them two teams going through. Um, and if you have a look at most of those groups, you could pick. You could pick all their like, So just yeah. let them go through anyway, like and save all the hassle of it. Yeah. All. yeah I, honestly, uh, I, I'm just like. Is there a better way sometimes to play these games? Maybe to play them at the end of the season, or I don't know, man. But it just uh, it's just killed my momentum, man. I mean, we've been going so well, mm. you know. What I mean, our last game, emphatic win over Crystal Palace, oh. you know. What I mean, playing some great football. Now I was looking forward to the next one. Now you know, uh, what's made me laugh has been some of the players that have pulled out, like um, oh, yeah. Rashford's pulled out of England now. Yeah, it could be an in listen. I'm not saying these are not. No, he injuries. did pick up a knock, didn't he? Yeah, knock, knock. Yeah. But do you think if they were playing this week, they'd be playing right? Uh, Harland, all of a sudden, this uh, groin injury. I know he'd be desperate for playing for um well, for for yeah, Norway. I, I get that. But it's any money he'll be back straight after that well, international. Well, I, I don't know about him these, because if, if it's a groin injury, it's a minimum three weeks, isn't it? Minimum. So he shouldn't, he should be. Where, where's he gone to? Uh, Marbella, I think, they, I heard him say. Oh, well, the groin's <laughs> healed up straight away. You know, <laughs> you know I mean? No, nah, it's not like he's gone to, you know, see his doctor. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I'm sorry, I'm not having it. No, no. no Even no. the Saliba one. I personally, I've, listen, I can't guarantee I'm telling the truth, right? Because I, I don't know the facts on this. But you got to think of it. If Saliba would have played, he's got a back problem. Mm. If he'd have played in that game against Crystal Palace, that means he, you know, we would have found it right. very difficult to say that he can't go on as international duty, isn't it? Yeah. Right? But by him not playing in that game and holding coming in for that one game, that means that Arsenal can mm. say, well, listen, he needs. They've been very you know, quiet about that, though, haven't they? Very Arsenal. quiet about it. Which I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's something like that, but I don't know. It's just so many players pull out, mm. you know. I, I, I'm very, I'm very skeptical of it, but it, to me, it's just like sort of killed the momentum a bit. I'll be off, furious but. if Saka plays both games. By the way, furious. I'll be furious as well, but you never know. He could. Oh yeah, he Southgate could, could because he loves, he yeah, lo he, he loves yeah. every team, but Arsenal. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> he, he'll flog our players. 
Yeah. Um, Apart from Ramsdale, of course. But Zinchenko's going to be on international yeah. duty as well. He probably will play both games for yeah. Ukraine. You know what I mean? That's up, against, like, up against Saka, isn't he? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So... Uh, uh, party, parties, yeah, party. He's one of the main guys from Ghana. He'll play. You know, I just want these guys to come back. You know, uninjured, man. Yeah, you know I mean, because we've got a very, very important run till the end of the season. Now, I mean, um, it's funny. I was at an event last night, and I have to say, right, just speaking to so many Tottenham fans there, speaking to so many United fans there, um, fans of various different clubs. Some who want us to win it others like Tottenham and a lot of United fans there who don't want us to win it which I was surprised that some of these United fans were going yeah would you rather City win it and they were like yeah would you not <laughs> right um, but the vibe I picked up from a lot of those fans right is that a lot of them are a bit scared a couple of the Tottenham fans said to me they go they go they are Robbie we're scared man you know I might do it they go every time we think you're going to crumble you don't crumble right and they go we're getting a bit frightened but they're all pointing to our running and say, yeah, but the running's there. You're going to crumble yeah, in that running. They're saving grace, isn't it? Yeah, you're going to crumble in that running. I want to look at those games, actually, that we're going to be facing. But have you picked up that vibe that some of them are Oh, look, listen, I picked you up. Scared, didn't they? I haven't seen Abby for a long while when they not see her like, you know, <laughs> my God, the girl's bitter. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, you know I, honestly, I think she's going to get a Man City tattoo, I think, like, you know I mean? It's so bad, you know? And, and, and this is what I can't understand about Man United fans, right? Um, now, they want Manchester City to win it, right? So, potentially, mm. they could get their treble. Yeah. Right? They, you know what I mean? Like, they, they, they're, they're favourites to win the FA Cup. They're favourites mm. to win the, the, cha the Champions League. And their second favourites to win the Premier League at this, as it stands at the moment. Mm. But they're rather like, oh, look, like hopefully they're because they're, 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 they've got no chance of beating them in that yeah. cup final. They've got, you know, they, they they can't stop them doing anything in the Champions League. So realistically, you know, and, and if Arsenal don't win it, I hope they do win the treble. I hope they do win the treble <laughs> to, 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 because you, Manchester, I, I can't get the fact right when Man United play Tottenham. As much as I hate Man United. I always want Man United. I want Man United to win two mm. games a season mm. against Tottenham. And there they are, Manchester United versus Man City, right? And they turn around and say, yeah, but they're not really our rivals. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> but when they lose 7 0 at a 7 0, well, well, you know what I mean? Man City are our rivals. You know, <laughs> you know, make up your mind who your rivals are. like. And, and I don't care what anybody says, it's a derby. Manchester United versus Manchester City should be the biggest, biggest thing. Mm. Because for us, I don't care. Look, listen, we had m massive rivalry with Man United, but Man Manchester United is Manchester. Tottenham Arsenal is the derby. Mm. Is the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But they're all frightened, man. I mean, I was I was I was really surprised. Like you know, they're like, yeah, we're scared of Arsenal, man. We're scared that you lot might do it, but but you're gonna crumble. You're gonna crumble. And I'm like, well, I don't know, man. You know, this team so far this season have not crumbled no. and have been passing test after test after test but they still seem to think right we're going to crumble right but let's have a look at it after the international break these are the games that we face there are 10 cup finals for Arsenal we now know we're not in the Europa League oh. obviously out of the FA Cup right We've got nothing else to play for apart from the league in seasons gone by a season's finished Right, because we're not even got a chance for the top four. It might be just like maybe could we get in the top six? But this year we're not even talking about top four because that seems to be done and dusted. We're like twenty points ahead of Tottenham. It would take an absolute. Can you say that again? Twenty points ahead of Tottenham. So it would take an absolute disaster not to get into the top four. No Arsenal fan is even mentioning the word top four, which has been brilliant. Mm. Right, it's the league, and if we win these ten cup finals. We win the league. There was a guy yesterday, Arsenal fan, who was saying to me, he's worked out that if we win at least seven games, I don't know how he worked that out. But um, I think it's seven games, but you've got to beat Man City. Yeah, but oh, okay, is that how he worked it out? So seven games, but you've got to beat Man City. But there's ten games to go. First game up straight after the break, at home against Leeds United, um, threatened with relegation. Yeah. But they did get a really good win on the road the last time out against um, Wolves. Also down near the bottom, by the way. Um, 
So, on paper, you know, at home against Arsenal, you'd have us as the favourites to win. Yeah, that. yeah, confident, right? Then Pro- this is now where all of the uh, <laughs> all of the haters are looking. Oh, and hoping and praying. And I, I, yeah, and they're I'll tell you, all, the, all of the haters have pinpointed the month of April. This is it. April is the month for the haters. The haters are saying, yeah, this is the month when you lot are going to trip up. First up, well, second up after that Leeds game is away to Liverpool at Anfield. I cannot remember the last time we won at Anfield. As a matter of fact, normally we go there every year and we get a beat now. And we know they're capable of doing it, despite the fact that it's not the same Liverpool that we've seen last season. They've had a lot of problems, but let's not forget that 7-0 against Manchester United. Um, (laughs) You know, it shows what they're capable of. When Liverpool are at home, when their fans are behind them, Mm. when it's a big game, they lift their game. We saw the the Real Madrid game. Yeah. Where they were winning 2-0, right? So even though they end up losing, so... That's the game. Tough game. That's the game. You know, that when you I'm, say that's the game, what that's do you mean? the game. You know, I won't be here for that game, but that's the game, like, you know what I mean? So, um, win that. And I, 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 how I look at it is if we beat Leeds, we beat Liverpool, we beat West Ham, and then we've got, I think we've got Southampton after. No, I'm going to go on to this, yeah. We, we, whatever, whatever Man City do, we go into that game, Man City, 11 points clear of them. Mm. because they've got the FA Cup game yeah. as well 11 points if we can Not go point. to the Etihad with 11 points in front of them it's a big ask I know but if it was to be oh my god mm. you know, and, and that means we have to beat Liverpool and West Ham which are going to be both tough games but Liverpool for me I think is a game the one. I think everybody's thinking that we can slip up there uh, yeah. we could take a point there and it wouldn't be disastrous but if we could go there, play our A game and beat them, oh well. It'd also be one of those games that if we went there and beat Liverpool at, at Anfield, it would be a confidence-wise. Yeah. The lift that that would give, that then says to every Arsenal fan and every Arsenal player that, yo, you know, if we can go to Anfield and take three points, we can do this. It's one of those games. I remember, I remember do you remember the, the season that Leicester won the league? I think they went to Man City and they beat them, remember? 3-1, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember watching that game and thinking to myself after that game, I go, yeah, they're gonna win this league. Gonna, they got a shot, yeah. They're gonna win this. If they, uh, I'm like, I was shocked. I was like, wow. Got you, <laughs> been to the Etihad, 3-1. I was going, Poof. Yeah. They're serious, they're gonna do this. This could be one of those games. We then play after that um, West Ham away. Now, the really, really weird thing about this West Ham game yeah, is that I know on the saying. Thursday night, West Ham have got a European game. Yeah, against it's quarter-final, isn't it? Quarter-finals against Ghent. Important game. I don't think they'll be able to really rest loads of players for that. I think that's an, an important game for them because, you know, having been in this, they want to go all the way to the final. Um, so we'll have a whole full week of you know, rest and training and getting ready for that game. And we'll go into that West Ham game really fresh. Yeah, and I think they're travelling to Kent. Is it for, they're travelling to Belgium? I I, think they are. Yeah, whereas they would have had a game on the Thursday night. That might be quite significant. We've got a good record against West Ham away from home as well. Yeah. Over the last few seasons as well, right? Continuing on in April, um, on the 21st of April, Southampton at home. Friday night kickoff, Southampton at home. Massive game. Massive game, but you've got to make us the favourites for that at home. Yeah. Even though Southampton don't get it twisted, they've got to draw at Anfield, drew with Tottenham. But come on, if that, we're going to win the league, that's a that, must win. That is a massive game yep. because that is the game. Again, it'll be a game in hand for us because Manchester City play on a Saturday in the yeah. FA Cup semi final. Yeah. So if we get a win there, mm. You know what I mean? And saying, win Some those more other points games. as well. We'd actually be 11 points in front games yeah. for Man City. Yeah, and then the pressure. Because on the Wednesday night now, the 26th of April, right? That's when we take oh. Man City away. Big oh. game, big, 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 big game. Live I'm on BT Sport, now. actually, right? But if you, like you said, if we had them sort of margins, what you talked about, even a point. 
Well, so if that comes to the case, just say that it comes to the case, we win all those games, we go 11 points clear in that game, we get a draw there, right? How many games left would there be after that? Um, um, five. Five, so 15 more, more points. We'd be mm. 11 points clear. Ooh. I don't even have to win a few more games after that, and it's it. I mean, yeah, when you look at it that way, I mean, it's a, it's a big it's ask. It's a big ask. But if we can it's win, a big ask. If we can win, beat Leeds, beat Liverpool, beat West Ham, beat Southampton, draw to Man City, we're, virtu it, yeah. we're virtually there, Robbie. You know imagine, I mean? if, imagine if we won all those games. Well, if we, if we, if we was to win all those games. It's basically... basically that would be it. That'd be it. I mean, it's, it's hard games. So when it's you say really you've got 10 games. cup finals, we've got five cup finals. Yeah? Win all them five. Win all them five, I mean... It, and out of those five, three of them are games that, even under normal seasons, you'd expect us to win. You'd expect us to beat Leeds. Well, yeah. You'd expect us to beat West Ham. You'd expect us to beat Southampton at home. It's the two, don't, no, but there's two, two games in there that you don't expect us to win. Yeah. Because historically, we always lose at Anfield and we always lose at the Etihad. And, and that is where I feel could be a real game changer. That if we were, I think one of them two venues. We've got to get a result. If we get a result at one of those two. Well, if, if we, we get a result, at, like you said, win all five of those. Yeah, if, 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 and the worst scenario is if we don't win both of them, we lose both of them, it's not in our hands no more mm. if Manchester City win their game. So, yeah. um, it is, you know, yeah, the next five games, if, you know, and that would be incredible to say after we lost to Man City, we went on one of our next 11 games. That's, you know, you deserve to yeah. win the title after that. Like. Yeah. So these next five games is, you know, Five cup final. I look at it. Yeah. These are five cup finals. If we can win all of them, we win the league. If we draw a couple, i.e. Liverpool and Man City, we still got great chance. Great chance. Yeah. Well, following it on after that Man City game on the Wednesday, and this is why I'm saying a lot of the uh, all the haters that I was talking to yesterday, right, at that event, were all pinning their hopes on April because at the end of April as well, we round off April with a game against Chelsea at oh. home as well. So that's, that's on Chelsea, the Saturday, yeah, on the Saturday. So that's Chelsea, Man City, and Liverpool all in one month. Two of them away, right? So some big games there. That's why we need our players to come back fit. Remember after the last year, wasn't it? It was like we came back after we were doing well. Yeah, when we was going for the top four, came back after that international break, fell apart, lost to Palace, uh, lost to Brighton, the lost to. Um, Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you know, horrendous. Like, I remember, so this is why you can't get carried away with things. I remember we, we played, man, uh, sorry, we played Aston Villa last mm. last season in the international break. 1 1 0, hung on the, towards the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Back on the train, we was, I think, a few points clear at top four then, like, and we said we've got our next three games. Yeah. Crystal Palace away, which we felt was going to be tough. Brighton. And, and Southampton win all those three top fours done do you know what I mean we, you know, lost a lot and we lost a lot lost all three and, and we lost we got injuries because of players coming yep. back being flogged on international shooting yep. so that's why I'm a little bit worried about this international break because mm. of what happened last season but I think that we're in a better position do you remember Tierney was pivotal yep. to our um top four chances last season mm. went on international duty and got injured didn't he yep. come back we had no left back mm. we had uh, I think we had injuries decimated right with injuries back, we towards decimated, yeah. decimated. Yeah. We've, we've improved on that squad side mm. of it like you know but there's no two ways about it like you know um, April April is, is is the decider yeah you know and then you know if we, we look at May which will obviously will be the last month of the season um, we go to Newcastle away that's not easy um, Brighton at home not easy not easy they beat us last season yeah. uh, Nottingham Forest away um, never easy never away. easy they're probably probably fighting for their lives at that yeah. time as well and the last game another team that could be fighting for their lives uh, Wolves. Wolves at home 
So not easy, but games there that more winnable type games you're looking at. Uh, Newcastle away is always a is always going to be a really tough game. Yeah, it is that um, Liverpool game for me, Rob? It is the you know that will that will determine to me whether though we enjoy those last few games. Mm. You know, um, look, we're capable of going there and we're, we're capable of winning all these games. You know, what I mean, someone said to me yesterday, which was a great thing. Or was it? You know. We've lost three games all season. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, like to, to lose a league now, we'd have to lose three in ten games. Yeah, so have to fall apart. You know, and, and what gives me encouragement that we won't do that is what I've seen in the last two weeks. Yeah, I, I, I really have. You know, I think one of the things that we've addressed really well this season is: do you remember when we like we lost to Crystal Palace, mm. and then we then lost to. Um, Bright, and then we went and lost to um, Southampton. And I'm, if you remember, the next game was Chelsea away, and we go oh, four yeah, on the yeah. spin there, and all that. And we won that, and then yeah. we got another couple of wins, and then we had yeah. another little. Uh, we've we've eradicated that from our game. Yeah, we've stopped that. You know what I mean? Like if we've had a little setback, you know. No, don't get me wrong. I think Thursday was a setback. Mm. Uh, not a, not a bad, but we we come for it. We lose to Manchester City. We lose our best player on the day. Um, and in the end of it, probably we would turn around and say on that day against Man City, deservedly they deserved they it. deserved it. They you know what I mean, we made mistakes, but they yeah. deserved it. But no feeling sorry for ourselves. Yeah. Five wins on the spin and some difficult games after that. By yeah. the way, you know Le- what I mean, like Leicester away, Aston Villa away. Mm. People were looking at it and going, "Oh, there's a couple." Yeah, a lot of away games. Isn't it? Yeah, come back one-one. All right, a little bit fortunate on a couple yeah. of them, but we got over the line. Five wins on the spin brilliant. since then Absolutely fantastic brilliant. Fulham in that as well and you away know? as well you know what I mean so you know, yeah. tough games tough games away and a lot of those games away from home a lot of those games away from home Let, let's look at Man City's running um, and this is including all their games right because this is the thing as well they've got a lot of games still left to play mm. um, they do have a squad that can cope with it but they do have a lot of games right when they come back they start off with um, a 12.30 kickoff against Manchester City. Liverpool. Um, so, sorry, Liverpool. You Manchester get, you're City. Excited, you're excited. <laughs> Manche- yeah, hopefully. They, that would be good. They've got to play, <laughs> play, play themselves. <laughs> Barry each other up like that. I mean. um, Manchester City versus Liverpool, right? So, but they're at home. It's at the yet to But tough, you know, Liverpool's always tough, right? Then they go away to Southampton. They lost um, there, by the way, in the um, League They Cup. lost in there in the League Cup, yeah. They and they're did. fighting for their lives, Southampton. And Southampton, we saw the comeback against Tottenham. You know what I mean? They're, they're fighting. They're, it won't be easy away from home. So they've got no um, midweek game in between there then, like, no? So it's... No. Right, OK. Then now, this is when it starts to get a bit tricky for them. And even again, that game against Southampton, do they rest players? Going into the bar. You know, do they rest maybe a De Bruyne or something? Because on the Tuesday... When, when did they play that game? They play that game on South the Edward. Saturday at 5.30. And, th- and the following day is then, we play Liverpool. Yeah. So it's a, that's a, that's a p- pivotal week. Then. Yeah, yeah. Pivotal week. Yeah. And then on the Tuesday now, they go, they go, uh, sorry, they're at home to Bayern Munich. So they're at home to Bayern Munich on the Tuesday. Then on the Saturday, they're at home to Leicester. They expect them to beat that. Yeah. Then they go away to Bayern Munich the following Wednesday. Right. Then come back. Um, now they don't have a Premier League game that weekend they play Sheffield United in the semi-final of the FA Cup that weekend that's kind of worked in their favour a little bit with, with I was desperate for them yeah, desperate you, for that draw for Man United to come out Man yeah, United, and, and, Man and then plus as well you wanted them to have like a tough Premier they League can, game they can rest after the Bayern it, game so yeah but they play Sheffield United um, I think they would have played Brighton yeah, um, that, that week. weekend, which they is not an played, easy one. They would have played Brighton, so, so that's going to go down there on the midweek. And they've got to go away to Brighton midweek, so that's got to be rearranged. Then on the Wednesday, following the FA Cup, they play us. So they play um, so us. It's a difficult little run of game. Like Bayern yeah. Munich would have took a little bit out of them, yeah. surely. Right, they play us on the Wednesday. Then they on the Sunday they go away to Fulham. Um, might be minus Mitrovic who's going to well, be a bit of a might be, band. definitely but um, yeah so on the Sunday the 30th of April they go away to uh, Fulham then um, still in uh, April they play home to West Ham I think we know what's going to happen in that one right 
Um, by the way, and look how many tickets are available for all the games. Man, they're buying out literally every game. Um, and then on, we get into May now. Leeds at home, you'd expect them to win that quite easily. Yeah. Away to Everton. That will be a tough one. Tricky little game, as we found. Yeah. Everton fighting for them lives. Sean Dyche. Everton have always, you know, Everton drew with them at home. Yeah. Um, at the Etihad. Um, then the week after that, they've got Man. Sorry, they've got uh, Chelsea at home. Um, and then the last game of the season, they go away to Brentford. And, and also, the they, they, haven't, they haven't got the possibly Real Madrid. Yeah, that and in between that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, in between, in between that, if they win their game against Bayern, back-to-back -back games against Real Madrid or Chelsea, they could actually, you could have one of those scenarios where they play Chelsea like you know quite a few times yeah, over the weeks that can make it a little bit stale yeah. you, so, uh, so running wise do you want them to beat Bayern Munich of course I do yeah yeah I, I want them to beat Bayern Munich uh, yeah. stay but, in that but, competition as long as possible but I don't I want it to be like 1-1 one, one over, the, over there or 1-0 one, 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 tight yeah so they've had maybe extra time just a bit of extra time to be sprinkled in there and yeah. get through then who would you want them to play Real Madrid or Chelsea either it does make it because to me, even playing Chelsea over two legs is a tough game. Mm. It's a tough game. Is he playing an English team? Another bit English travelling, no, like a bit travelling yeah, to Spain. But probably, mind you, Pep Man's no, Actually, no, probably Real Madrid. I don't want Chelsea to end up getting through to no final or nothing like that. Because anything we've seen over the years in those, um, over the years in those Champions League games, right? You know, Tottenham beat them. They've been beaten before by Chelsea. I mean, this is not, not a given. In no, life, no. You know, I, you know uh, and listen, that, that Champions League, you know, people um, people always say this. It really annoys me a little bit when they turn around and go, oh, you're only saying that because you've never won it. It's got nothing to do with that. Like, mm. The best teams not necessarily win that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it is a cup competition. You need mm. a little bit of luck. You need a little bit of luck on the draw. Mm. And it's fine margins. Um, so... Chelsea, you were having a real torrid time in the in, in the, the league. Are you telling me that if they was to to go on and win that, they're the best team in Europe? No, they're the best team in a competition which is like three or four games now. Once you get over, once you get over that uh, Champions League, the league stages, anything mm. can happen in that. Like you know, I don't think Real Madrid, by, by the way, were the best team in it last season. They they rode their luck on a, on a few occasions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need that little bit of luck. So uh, you know. That would be a be a nice uh, nice thing if they can play those four games. Four games. Not only are they just four games, Robbie, they're intense four mm. games as well, like do you know what I mean? Got to take a little bit out of you. Got oh, to 100%. take a little bit out of you. One hundred percent. While we're good. while we're sitting at home yeah. resting. One hundred percent. I was looking at um I was looking at um some games. So this, you know, I was looking at just just the, when a lot of people are saying about us crumbling and things like that. Last season, I'm going to give you two lineups. Yeah. So first of all, the lineup when we got beaten by Tottenham. I think I've spoken about this before on the show, yeah. or maybe on another show. But the lineup was uh, Ramsdale in goal. I think it was. Oh no, sorry. I'm doing, this is when we played Newcastle. Remember that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ramsdale in goal. Yeah. Nuno Tavares at left back. Yeah. Gabriel and Ben White centre backs. Both uh, injured. Both Tom, carrying knocks. Remember that? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Asu, um, who came off. Tommy Asu. Yeah. Tommy Asu. They all got they all got injured in that game as well, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think yeah. Gabriel was struggling with a, yeah. a thigh injury. That's right. At Tottenham, he came off. He, he came, came off. off yeah. You know uh, I mean? Granite Xhaka, Mohamed El Nenny. Uh, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, Saka, and Eddie and Ketty up front. That was the that was the lineup for for that game. <sighs> and when we played um, when we played Tottenham, it was Ramsdale in goal. Uh, Tommy Asu played as a left back in that game. There was no Tierney. Um, Gabriel, um, Holding, who got a red card in that yeah. game. Remember, Cedric was playing right back. Xhaka, El Nenny. Odegaard, um, Saka, Enketia, um and Martinelli. I think the team that we've got now, what we have at our disposal now is way stronger, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Way stronger than that. Um, <laughs> you look at that, I thought, you see that scene here, when I, when I look at that, 
I actually went to White Hart Lane that game. Think, oh, we get, we'll definitely get a draw. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you look at it really. Like, you look you at it now I mean? and you just think, well, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, what would be the difference now? So you'd have, uh, you'd have uh, Cedric would be out and you'd have uh, Ben White at right back. Yeah. Um, Holding would be out and you'd have Saliba <laughs> there. Tommy Asu would be out and you'd have Zinchenko <laughs> there. El Nenny would be out. You'd have Thomas oh, Partey. Um, you still have all the guys. Still have Xhaka. Um, still have Saka, Martinelli. Um, Jesus, up Jesus would be in for Enketia, or you've also got the option of Trossard. It's a different team, and this is what again I was saying to a lot of these guys last night. I'm like, you know, you've not been watching enough Arsenal this season. It's a different team. It's a, it's a more mentally strong team. Yeah. It's a better team. The additions of players like Saliba, the additions of players like Jesus, Zinchenko, you know, Trossard. You know, it's a stronger team this year. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's not a team I feel that, you know, listen, we can drop points. I, I Like you said, we've only lost three games this season. I don't see us losing another three. I, I think there could be draws in there. Yeah. But I do think that this is a team that is mentally strong and can react. Trossard scored a hat-trick earlier this season at Liverpool. He'd be looking forward to go to Anfield. Yeah. He won't be. He won't be scared, will he? No, like, listen, you know what I mean. Listen, so Liverpool are not the team they were last. Year. Look, look, you know, listen, Liverpool are, are um, and I, I'm going to say this now. You know, I might live to regret this. Manchester United are not an Arsenal neither. Mm. You know, we're a better team than Manchester United. Yeah. So we're going to go there. You know, uh, I, I think if we play our A game, they play their A game. Our A game's better than theirs at this yep. moment in time. Yep. They've got players coming back. Listen, Liverpool have got players, you know, and, and I always respect what Liverpool do. I, I wanted Liverpool to win the league last season because... Yeah, me too. Because they're, they're, they're not a team that's chucking money at it and everything like that. They do it like, like we they do. They do it like we do it. And I yeah. think like, you know... As a matter of fact, I think we kind of copy their model. A little bit. A yeah. little bit like, and, 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 you know, and I've always had a little mm. admiration for, for, for the way Liverpool have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with yeah. them. Without the without the funds, and I don't think Klopp's got the credit for that. And I think at the end of the day, he's probably a little bit jaded himself doing it. Mm. But they've got players up front on their day can destroy you. So on their day they can destroy you. Nunes, yeah, and they've been mm. great. But what they will do, and I think is the greatest thing about it, is that they they will not shut up shop. They will come for it. Yeah, and that will give us opportunities. Now we will have opportunities. We must take them. When you Fine, fine lines in football, isn't it? Mm. You must take your chances, and if we take our chances there, listen. I've gone to Liverpool. I, you know, I got smashed and got criticised for you know saying a free hit a couple of seasons ago, like mm. trying to stick up for Mikel. Like, by the way, people slagged me off because I said I was trying to slag, trying to give him a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a, a bit of a, a free ride that day, and, and and it got. But I've actually gone there, hoping. You know, I remember once getting up in the hotel and, and I, I was saying to myself, oh, as long as we don't concede three today. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, and we were four nil down at half time. We've you know, also we've also gone there over the years and taken a lead and things like that and yeah. just not held on to oh, it. Well, yeah, I remember going up. Do you remember yeah. we went up there? Was it Maitland Niles scored? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One nil yeah, yeah. up and we, before we knew it was three one down. Yeah. Again, look at the type of players, Maitland Nars. We, it's just a different grade of player that we've got now that fills me with a bit more yeah, hope I'll going up there, you know what I mean? I feel, we I have, feel we've got a chance. Yeah, 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 we've I, definitely I, got a chance. I, I honestly feel, Robbie, like, you know what I mean? Like, over the years, over the couple of the years, and I don't mean this na nasty, I'm not being negative mm. or whatever. I've gone to those games, Liverpool, Manchester City, Man United. I, before we're even going up there, I'll take I'll have a I'll take, take a, a point. Draw, yeah. I'll take a point. I'm actually going to Liverpool thinking, no, I'll take a point, but I'm not like, I, I think we can go there and win for the yeah. first time in a very, very long while. Yeah. I'm not saying that we're going to, but we've got a chance. I actually think, you know, going to the Etihad, you know what I mean? Like, I think we've got a chance because, yep. because I, I look at the performance in the FA Cup when we re-rotate a little bit for mm. 45 minutes of that game, we was a better side. Yeah, you know, so yeah, wherever we go at the moment, there's that little bit of nerves, isn't there? Because that's how it should be, you know. What mm. I mean, but I feel confident, you know. And these last two games, that Fulham game, by the way, Fulham Premier League game, mm. half time, we're already slippers think, on. Think, yeah, thinking of the next game. Mm. When well, yeah. have you been able to do that with the Arsenal? Yeah, years? no, it's been brilliant. It's been brilliant. Um, so th those, those are the those are some of the games uh, coming up. I mean, it really, really tough. But listen, 
the 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 prize at the end of it oh. is, is is unbelievable. Um, by the way, uh, don't forget to do your AFTV picks. Uh, you got them pretty well last week. I've done all right. Yeah, yeah done all right. Um, six got six. Six, right? six. Yeah. Yeah. How much money do you win? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many bloody good players out there, aren't there? Like you know what I mean? Like, what? Uh, I look at it and you know <coughs> some of them things I study it and I think right yeah uh, there was a, who was the guy I think it was Stoke Norwich I think uh, Stoke in form mm. Norwich are in form so you're thinking right draw. okay it's a draw like you know what I mean but but my head so, said no Stoke will win at home like, and then, and then it, it's a draw yeah. you know what I mean like but like yeah yeah it's like like look at how many coupon buses there were last week look at um the Chelsea game Chelsea Everton look yeah at, look at Tottenham. Throwing away a throw. Oh, I predicted lead. a draw in that one, like. You know, did you? Yeah, I did. I predicted. Oh, I thought they beat Southampton. When, when you know it was three-one, I turned it up. I said, Ah, right, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> By the way, their meltdown. Actually, we come to. Oh, that. We'll come we, to have, that. we have a little talk about. Yeah, it. let's have a little chat about that. But we've come. Well, first of all, um, let's just quickly. England versus Ukraine. They're doing a special on, yeah. on the AFTV picks. Don't forget, scan the QR code or click the link in the description to play along with us. Um, Half-time result. I've gone with England. Yeah, so have I. Yeah, I've gone with England. Um, 2 0 at half time, I think I put. Um, full time, sorry, 1 0 at half time, 2 0 at full time, I've gone. Both oh, teams wow. to score, I went no. Same as me. Over 2.5 goals, no. No, yeah. England to have 6.5 corners, no. no. Um, Ukraine to have over 3.5 corners. I put yes. No. I put, oh, yes, put yes. On that, no. I put no. England to have 1.5 cards, I put no. no. Ukraine to have 2.5 cards, I put no. No. Um, Harry Kane to score at any time. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no. Yeah, what did you put? I'll put yes. Ah, you're <laughs> fucking out Because those are the games he scores in when the pressure's off. Ooh, right? Oh. Ooh. Could he be uh, the selfish one? Huh? Is he the selfish one? Now, listen. By the way, so don't forget, you can do your picks. Click the link in the description. Get involved right now. Scan the QR code. Um, play along with us. Time to win some money, man. We ain't won nothing. Yeah, for weeks. well, maybe we'll win some money because yeah, because you can win ten grand on the. There's the ten grand you can win, and looking at the the. the I've got no allegiances to these teams. Yeah, yeah, maybe do, that do, might do, help. Do, do, do yeah. You might yeah. help, like yeah, yeah right. because we we'll end up getting like we're right, gonna well, win it this week, like yeah. yeah. Do you want to go like Scotland versus Cyprus? I've gone Scotland. I've gone Scotland. Belarus versus Switzerland. I've gone Switzerland. Yeah, I've gone Armenia that. versus Turkey. That's a taste of game, that is. Turkey, I've gone. Right, I've gone Turkey. They're playing well, Turkey, like. Yeah. yeah. Spain versus Norway. No Haaland now, I've gone Spain. Right. Croatia versus Wales. I've gone Croatia. Andorra versus Romania. I've gone Romania. I've gone Romania, yeah. England, Ukraine. I've gone England. Yeah. Malta versus Italy. I've gone Italy. Yeah. Northern Ireland versus Finland. I've gone Finland. Oh, I've gone Northern Ireland. Have you? Yeah. Um, so and Slovakia wonder. versus Bosnia. I've gone Slovakia. I've gone Slovakia. Oh. It's, I tell you, it's funny that because like Turkey, Turkey. Ten grand like, incoming. So, so it could be up there, like you know, Turkey have started to really perform well since Turkish has become his art. He's become to start supporting <laughs> Ireland. Like, you know what I mean? like, so uh, Tur Turkey have started doing well again, like you know. So uh, that'd be very interesting. All right, right we've only win. got one different on that one. Then. Yeah, price pot of ten thousand pounds on a Saturday, and one thousand five hundred on the even Sunday. nine to do it. So Robbie, come on. Even if we get nine, yeah, yeah, yeah come on, man. It's about time we. So we're blazing this weekend. We're coming for it. We're, we're coming, coming for it. it like, you know what I mean. The, the, international, the international break might do us good. Yeah, we might, we might, yeah. Have, we might be happy come next week. <laughs> let me just check my. Let me just check at the time of doing this show. Let me just check to see. Oh, he's still. He ain't been sacked yet. <laughs> Conte's rant last week. That was extraordinary. After that game, Tottenham. Yeah. Do you know what? Right. It, it, you know when you're own club's manager, cursed, yeah, cursed, yeah, man. when you're own manager. <laughs> Tells everybody what everybody knows. It's, 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 it's you couldn't it's, write it. You couldn't write it. It's absolutely the gift that keeps on giving. It. Oh, I love it. Like I, I, when I, I, I actually didn't see it. You know what I mean? Like, and then someone, you know, it was going. Oh, you got to watch it. I actually sat there and watched it, and I couldn't believe what I, I was watching. I couldn't believe what I was. I thought it was a wind up. I thought it was a wind up. He like, goes. You know he, goes I mean? he goes. Um. He goes. Oh, I'm not gonna. He goes, I've hidden it before. I've hidden it before, but now I'm going to say it. And what I want to find out is when Conte says players are selfish, mm. which players is he talking about, right? Because is he talking about Harry Kane? Is he talking about Son? 
Is he talking about Kulazeski, the big players? Is he talking about Hoiberg? Even Hoiberg came out, didn't he, right? On yeah, international yeah. duty. And he says that the manager needs to clarify who he's talking sure, about. Man, yeah. Now, to me, when you're saying, if you've got a team of players and you're saying they're selfish, yeah. you're probably not talking about the little guys, are you? You're not no, talking no, about you're, the small it's, guys. It's, 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 it's you're a big talking part. about those big boys. 100% you're, you're talking about You're saying, ah, oh, yeah, part. you're just playing for yourself. Yeah. You, so is he talking about Harry Kane? Is he talking about Son? I was asking these Tottenham fans last night. They were very uncomfortable, didn't want to speak about it, didn't want to answer the question. But who is he talking about? Well, you know, one of the ones that's going to have to be up for up for nomination, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it, it's Richarlison. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because he already came because out. Because he's come out. How he's he, yeah, yeah. How, he's, how he's not doing this and doing that. Would help if you scored a goal here and there. Like, you know what I mean? Like 60 million, by the way. 60 million, 60 no million. Not six. Not six. Not s 60 six million. Is, six is what Martinelli got. Six. Yeah, yeah I think Martinelli was six million. <laughs> 60 million. He has not scored a Premier League goal. He's actually got more injuries than goals. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> And, and he then comes out and digs at the manager. And do you know what made that even worse on Conte's part? Is that he moaned and groaned about it and the next game Conte played him. So, you know, they're, they're all as bad as each other. Now, I'm going to say this now. Conte, before he went to Spurs, right, I honestly thought, well, oh, no, good manager, you know, born winner. His credibility now, I think, has gone... Down. I know but, you don't agree with me on that, but I think you no, know. He's smart. He's smartly because what he's doing with this whole thing is he's distancing himself. So basically, if you listen to some of the things he was saying, he was saying things like, "In all my career, I've never seen this. I've never had players that are so selfish, so you know, only playing for themselves, don't follow instructions." That's basically what the message he's putting across. He's going and. Let me tell you this, it's not just me. Look, they did it with Mourinho. They've done it with many other managers. That's why they haven't won anything over the years. So almost what he's trying to put out, he's trying to put out a message like, yo, it's impossible to manage this club. It's impossible to manage these players. They haven't got the fire in them. They haven't got that. I look in their eyes, he goes. That he goes, they're just comfortable with mediocrity. And he sort of calls out the club as well, more or less. So what he's saying is, it starts all the way from the top and it comes all the way down. They're just comfortable. And nothing I can do. I've done everything. And mm. this is the impossible job. And to me, he's smart in doing that. Because now, when he leaves there, right, he'll, go to, he'll still get another job. Because... He, he, he'll still get another big job because he'll be able to just sort of bin that and say, that was impossible there. I told you guys, I came out. Yeah, yeah. I came out and I told you lot, man. That job with those players, impossible, right? He's smart, he's you know, smart. He's got a real method in his madness. And, 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 and I want to bring this around to the Arsenal now, lot, because do you know what, right? And I was told this the other day, at the same stage last season, games Spurs mm. are one point better than what they are now one point right the mm. difference the difference and why there's a big massive meltdown mm. is because Arsenal have gone f over the hill and far away yeah and that is putting more pressure and more irritation on Spurs fans look, look, listen we've been there when when Spurs were one or two points in front of us and all that it was unbearable like you know what I mean like you know mm. But I think because they had a fantastic season last year, you know what I mean? It was all, you know, they won the, mm. the, the transfer window in the summer. They, yeah. they, they yeah. got to top four, you know, Conte was brilliant. Everything was fantastic about them, right? They're one point better off last season than they are this season. The reason they're in meltdown, the, me, the reason it is there is because Arsenal have gone, phew, yeah. see you later. Yeah, and they can't handle it. They can't handle it. I actually spoke to one of my Spurs mates just I played football with him, and he said, "The unbearable thing is that we've been good for five years, right? Haven't won nothing. When you nicked a couple of cups along the nicked, you know what I mean? Like, I like the way you say <laughs> nicked a couple of cups. But I'll take that. We've nicked a couple of cups along the way, and now you've you've t overtaken us for the first time in five years, and you're going to win the Premier League." Oh, if that happens, 
as a Spurs fan, I don't know if I, you ruined, I've had my childhood ruined by <laughs> Arsenal and now my adult life is going to be ruined by <laughs> Arsenal. And that is fantastic. That is what they feel at the moment. You know what I mean? To have that thing and then Arsenal to just steamroll and go and win the Premier. They are desperate. Mm. They are desperate for Liverpool, but they are desperate for us to fold. You know what I mean? Like, please Arsenal, you know what I mean? Like, use that as, an, use as, that a, as, a, yeah. as, a, as a stick not to let it, you know, let's, let's enjoy what we're doing. But their meltdown, you know what I mean, uh, uh, with us challenging for the title, you know, it, it is it's just, a, it's a wonderful thing, Robert. It's a wonderful <laughs> thing, isn't it? I can't help it, but, you know, my mate, I took my mate the other day, he, he, he called it, I've got to say that, you know what I mean, he, 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 uh, he, he called it, he said, when Conte signed, he said, don't worry about it, it'll all go wrong then. I said, oh, I don't think it will, because he's a good manager and all that, like, you know what I mean, they've got mm. good players, they've got a good manager now, trust me, it will go wrong. And he, he phoned me the other day and he said, when are you going to start listening to me? I said, well, well, I might start listening, where, where do they go from here? Where do they go? Who from cares? I don't know. Hopefully down. Ryan right Mason, isn't it? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, that's going to cause a few problems for me, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just. Uh, oh, I was, yeah, because you, don't you know he's. Uh... I, I, I know, like, me and, me, and, me and Ryan's dad are really good friends. Mm. And uh, I obviously know Ryan since he was a baby. And I was actually talking to Claire, I said, oh, he's going to get the job. Like, I said, thank God we ain't got to play him because I can't have that song where they sing about the manager's mum you know what I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, and of course I know Lisa so I wouldn't be able to sing like you know what I mean all those songs so uh, you know um, yeah so it looks like he's he's going yeah, to get, get to the end of the season I think I think that's what they'll do and hopefully you know like it's a fact because we like Glenn the dad is a massive Chelsea fan mm. and he's going obviously he wants Ryan to do well yeah but he don't because it's Spurs, you know what I mean, like you know. So, <laughs> li little story with um, with Glenn. Um, he, um, do you remember like a few years ago, Chelsea played Spurs in the cup final. Mm. Uh, Chelsea won two 0 and Ryan played in that. And Glenn, mm. a massive Chelsea fan, wanted Chelsea to win. Wow! Even though his son was playing for Spurs, that is true. He's dying. Oh, yeah. He's dying. Glenn, I love you. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, even though Ryan played in that game, he wanted Chelsea to win, like, because they're season ticket holders, him and his granddad, like, yeah. Yeah. Got to finish off by talking about um, Mesut Ozil. Mesut Ozil retired, oh. retired um, from football this week, age 34. Um, you know, <laughs> still seems a bit young, isn't it? Um, but of course, you know, after leaving Arsenal, went over to Turkey, hasn't really quite worked out for him, and uh, he's decided to retire. Um, how will you look back on Mesut Ozil's time at Arsenal? Um, I always remember when we signed Mesut Ozil. I yeah. always remember, that was in the early days. We only just started doing AFTV. Um, and I remember we were filming outside the ground when it was announced on, um, it was in the summer. It was a really hot day, I remember it. And when Mesut Ozil got announced as signing for Arsenal, there was a spontaneous eruption where there was a few people on, uh, you know, there that was sort of gathered, you know, hoping that we were gonna get this big signing in. They'd heard the rumors. And when it got announced, there was people cheering and jumping mm. up. And then, no word of a lie, Lee, say there was about, say 15 people there within about half an hour there's about 100 people on the street on the street cheering the street got blocked right you know that brown yeah, the yeah. roundabout in front of the stadium yeah, that yeah. got blocked with so many people on the street i remember interviewing fans who were saying right that's it we're going to challenge for the title because remember we got the, the significant thing about it is that we've gone a very long time where that's all right, we yeah. did was sell our best player sell our best player buy little, some little half mm. rated players and bring in, right? This was the one time now where we had gone out, spent big money and bought in a world-class player. Yeah, And there was a lot of people that looked on this, not just for the fact that we signed Mesut Ozil, but also the fact that now all of a sudden we had a superstar. This was gonna be a turning point for Arsenal. Didn't really turn out that way as far as league titles are concerned. We won a couple of FA Cups mm. with him. 
um, in the team. But how do you look back on Meza Ozil's time uh, at <laughs> Arsenal? I'm going to say that now. Meza Ozil, right? You know, it, if one fan can split a fan, fan base, one player, one player, yeah, yeah, he, he's done it because he split divides he's opinion, divided opinion. Divided opinion all through his Arsenal career, and it, you know, I. I I, I, I actually watched him at times and was memorised how good a footballer mesmerized. he was. Mesmerised. Yeah, what yeah. a good footballer he was. Yeah. You know, some of the touches. I remember one come out from a goal kick on the and he was on the line and he, he brought it down and, and you think, wow. You know, I, I look back on it and I don't think he fulfilled what he should have done at Arsenal. That's how I, that's how I feel. I, I just think that maybe he didn't have the players around him. If he had the players around him, you know, someone said that would he get into the Arsenal team now? I don't think he would, even though he's a great, great talent because of that reluctance to do what other players do off yeah. the ball. But on the ball, oh my God, what a good player. Yeah. I just think that, you know, 34 tells you a lot, tells you that he's not, what's the word, I'm really dedicated to the job mm. because if he was you know you look at Ronaldo he's you know still playing and all mm. that he could have gone and played for uh, other places mm. and all that I just I, there was, there's, so, there's something in him in him that wasn't quite quite right but on his day you know a wonderful wonderful player will he go down as one of my favourite ever players no mm. no because I'm always a believer in, uh, 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 my dad was the same and all that wasted talent yeah do you know what I mean? My my dad, like when I, he goes back, he always, you know, people go on about George Best was the best player, and he goes, mm. yeah, but he's not not my best because he wasted what he had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you look at someone like Ronaldo, I think Ronaldo, I admire because he's got every ounce of, even though he's got the talent, he's mm. got every bit out of it. Yeah. And other players have done that in the past. You know what mm. I mean? Like, and so they're the sort of players that I look at and think, wow. I just think at the end of the day. There always be a question mark. Yeah, and there shouldn't. Yeah, be. I mean, with, with, with him as well. I, I'm, you know, you say that he divides a, a, opinion amongst fans. He divided opinion with me every week. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. Because one week, I'm like, we're looking at an unbelievable player. Look at the skills. I was there in Belarus when he scored. Oh, that time. What, what a goal! You know, was. what I mean, like some of the goals, some of the touches, some of the assists. Yeah. Right. But then the next week now, he's like. He's almost like you're playing with ten players. Yeah, like yeah. almost like some some weeks he'd be like, if he weren't on it a week, it's almost like he couldn't be asked. And that was what used to upset fans sometimes. You know what I mean? And what divided opinion? And I I think right with Meta Özil, my favourite period was when he, he had Alexis Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. When those two were firing, man, we had some team and they were some combination, man. And and I and I and I do still stick to the fact that we did not give him the best chance to no. shine, right? He needed a defensive midfielder behind him. In those days, in the system that we played at the time, he needed help. Mesut Ozil does not tackle, Mesut Ozil yeah. does not run back and trap back and that. And if you've got players like that, you've got to build a team yeah, to 100%. cater for that. Like, Ronaldo doesn't trap back. No. Ronaldo, Robert, Robert, Robert Perez didn't. Robert Perez didn't. There's many players over the years, they don't do that, right? But we, we never gave him that protection around him. Yeah. We never, you know, if he had a Thomas Partey behind him, or if he had a couple of defensive, you know, you know, some teams like Liverpool, in in their pomp, that's what they had in it. They sort of had, yeah, yeah, exactly. Fabinho, yeah. Um, Wijnaldum, um, um, Jordan Henderson, these workers in midfield, and then they just said to all the flair players, right, you lot go and do your thing, man. If you lot lose the ball in that, we've got everything. Covered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We yeah. never did that. No. We never, we never gave. Left him exposed, didn't we? Yeah, we never gave Mesut Ozil the chance to really go and express himself and to really go and shine. And I think that that's one thing that really pisses me off him a bit, a bit right? Yeah. Because I think we could have got more out of him, right? Because he was such an unbelievable. My one of the players that I pay my money to watch. Yeah, yeah. Def because of the that's ability. A great point. And he just did it naturally. It just came to him naturally. The no look passes. The, the, he was just brilliant. But I don't think we gave him the fair chance to shine. And would he get into today's team? This is the thing why I think he's retired now, right? Would he get into today's Arsenal team? No. The reason being, the game's changed. Yeah. And I, I think as well, that's what's ha that what happened 
that's what happened to Mesut Ozil is that the game in general not just at Arsenal but the game in general has changed in that you can't just have flair no. you've got to have work rate and I always remember when we signed Martin Odegaard um, and speaking to this journalist from Norway I did an interview with him and he said basically he goes you signed Mesut Ozil but with work, work rate, rate. Yeah. right and Mez, you know, Mesut Ozil would not do that closing down that you nah, see Odegaard nah. do. Would not do that tracking back. You know, chance that was not in his game. He's he's not built like that. He's not built to play like that. And I think that that type of player like Mesut Ozil will struggle now to get in any team. Yeah, because of that. Because you've got to have the work rate yeah. to back it up. You've got to have all of that. If you don't have that, yeah, I, I, that's a great point. Like you know, I, I think. In those final thirds, you, you you know, Ozil was better than Odegaard, just in those. But yeah. if sometimes the game's not like that, Odegaard makes it up when he's work rate and things like that. And you see that, uh, uh, you know, you know that Ozil wouldn't be mm. doing that. Mm. And, 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 you know, that's all credit to, to, to Odegaard that he's that, he's the more modern day he's number changed. 10. He's, he's changed. changed. He, yeah. even, even you look at somebody like Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, it does like, it, yeah. Brilliant. Obviously, technically unbelievable, does all the things that Mesut Ozil do. But not only that, his work rate, his yeah. tracking, yeah. His, his, he does all of that. And, and that's the problem with Mesut Ozil. That weren't part of his game. So you'd have, when it started to really get to become, football was really becoming that way, you'd, you'd see a commentator saying, boy, with the ball, Arsenal got 11 men, without it, they got 10. Yeah. Because he just didn't have that work rate, but I, I want, I, I, you know, I, I, and I didn't like the way it ended for Mesut Ozil nah. at Arsenal either. I thought it was sort of engineered to get him out. You know, um, yes, he was on a big contract. I know that. Um, yes, he he said a few things that he shouldn't have said, but I didn't. I, I, I don't know. I just didn't. It it, it 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 didn't sit right. Yeah, I hope that one day he can be a player that comes back. Yeah, and it's a gets great a great point. and gets a great welcome, right? Because he was with us for quite a while. All right, we didn't win the things under him, right? But I still think you know, we I mean, never really he said a, a lot we, to we us. never really said farewell to him, did we? We didn't, we didn't, because remember it was all over the COVID period yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, and you know. But um, yeah, it was a shame how you know, I mean, how it started. You know, it's one of those things. How's it start? How, like how it started, glorious. And the, the, I, I mean, as I said, I'll always remember those fans and everything yeah. like that. How it ended, it just petered out, um, and it and it was a real shame. It was a real shame. But I think you know, I just think that football's changed now. Yeah, I think that's football's, a good point. Football's changed, and um, Mesut Özil's sort of uh, his style is a way of the past now. You know, yeah. I mean, you can't just have that. I think Pepe's found that when he's at Arsenal as well. You can have a lot of flair and all that going forward. What are you going to do when you lose the ball? You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's more, a, it's a and, great and, and, point. I, and I do think with football as well now, there's more systems. It's more system. You know what I mean? More systemic. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? The, 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 it's almost like the managers and the coaches have got show you a method of how they want you to move that ball up the pitch to get the goal. Yeah. Um, whereas, Mesut is the great improviser. You know what I mean? And maybe he doesn't fit into those systems. You know, again, you know what I mean? So, and that maybe that's why we were getting beaten quite easily at some yeah. of the big teams, because we didn't defend um, as, a, as, a, as a team. Yeah. You know, like Zaha, I, I watched him the other day. Yeah, I take him as a free transfer. Would he fit into Mikel's system? No, yeah. because when he loses it, but we don't track back. No. You know, no. And, uh, but you see, I, I, one of the biggest compliments I can give Martinelli and Saka is when they lose the ball, yeah, they're, they're backtracking. And, then guys, they're back in their own box. box you know what I mean? Granite like, Jacker's, but Granite Jacker, that's how he's changed. He's back in his box. He's yeah. like up and down the energy, the football. If you haven't got that in your game now, yeah. doesn't matter how skillful you are. Doesn't matter. How, you are gonna not going to make it at the yeah. highest level. No. So, listen, fond farewell to Mesut Ozil. I kind of get the feeling with uh, the way he's always done loads of things for charity. Mm the way he's passionate about so many different things outside of football I don't think we'll be hearing the last of him I think uh, Mesut Ozil is going to be a guy that uh, you know will be doing a lot of things outside of football yeah. but, I like that, but I think he had a great a, career yeah great career and, and also hopefully you know um, we will see him back at the Emirates I want to see him yeah it's nice to see ex-players yeah 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 it's nice to see and I mean you know I'd, I'd love to him to come back and 
you know, for the fans to give him a proper send off, man, because you know, I thought I thought he was a good send. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we've reached the end of the show today. Uh, don't forget, if you want to do your AFTV picks, click the link in the description or scan the QR code and get involved right now. Um, it's the international break, so um, I don't know. We'll be chilling for the, <laughs> chilling for the weekend. <laughs> but we can't wait for next week when the games return. Then we get into those last 10 games of the season. Can Arsenal do it? We're going to find out. We're going to keep you right across it here on the Invincible Podcast. Lee, thank you very much. Don't forget you can get this podcast on all your normal formats. Thank you and see you next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.